Hey, what is going on everybody? It is Rob, AKA The Diligent Deb, and in this video, we're gonna be talking about a new technology I just discovered a few weeks ago called Supabase. So what Supabase is, and what they're touting themselves as, is the open source version of Firebase. So you're gonna get things like real-time subscriptions that you can subscribe to. It's gonna build out your APIs for you. You're not gonna have to build out any APIs, but the main difference is that it's a PostgreSQL database as opposed to a document database. So you're gonna get things like SQL joins and the ability to run stored procedures, but you're also gonna get that real-time database along with it and the ability to not have to write backend code, essentially. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hop over to the computer, we're gonna check it out, and let me know what you think. Okay, so here we are over at supabase.io, and from the get-go, you can tell that they are targeting Firebase by saying the open source Firebase alternative. Supabase adds real-time and RESTful APIs to Postgres without a single line of code. And you can see here they're setting up a subscription on their messages table, and they're checking on the insert of a new record and it is console logging a new message. If we scroll down here, we can get a little bit more information. They show you how it works. Um, it's built with Postgres SQL. So unlike Firebase, you're gonna get access to features like table joins and stored procedures, but it says you can sign up and query your Postgres database in less than two minutes. You get the full Postgres database, instant RESTful API, real-time notification via WebSockets. They're saying that your API is always in sync with your schema, custom API docs for your schema, and we'll go into that later, built-in security and monitoring, they got auto updating, just all sorts of stuff that you can use their real time applications for. Down here, it's gonna show you a couple of different things you can do. So it's gonna show you how to get your data, how to make subscriptions, how to create a record, how you would update multiple rows. And we're gonna get into all that. And they give you some use cases and highlight their self documentation. So one of the nice things about Superbase, and we're gonna jump into this a little bit later, is that when you're creating your tables, it's gonna go ahead and create the documentation that you're gonna need. So all you really have to do is copy and paste the code that they generate into your project and it's just gonna work. And if we scroll down a little bit, they tell you a little bit about their repos that they have. So we're gonna scroll back up a little bit. We're gonna to go to their docs. And like they said, this is completely open source. They're gonna show you how to get started and how to create update, delete, read, subscribe to different things, how to execute stored procedures. If we go over their pricing, as you can see right now, it is free, but if you're gonna use this, I would highly suggest that you start contributing to them because I feel like this is gonna be a great product. And like I said, it's gonna be open source and the only thing they're gonna be charging you is if you host your Superbase instance with them. And if we go over to their Postgres plus goodies, you can see, you can view their repository here. They show you how to use it with Docker, how to install it on DigitalOcean, and how to install it on AWS. And without any further ado, let's head over to their app and I'll show you exactly how to set up Supabase and what you can do with it. So let's go up to the top here and click on app.supabase.io. And I'm gonna go ahead and click on login. And you will need a GitHub account to either create an account or log in with them. So I'm just going to continue with GitHub. And you'll see I've had an organization called Diligent Dev. If you wanted to create a new one, you just need an organization name. But we're just going to go ahead and use Diligent Dev. And then you'll see that I have a Diligent Dev project. And you can create new projects up here. So we'll go ahead and go into my Diligent Dev project. And the first page you land on is a SQL editor. And you can do a lot of things here. They have some templates here for you to create a table, add a column, comments, just all sorts of stuff that you can do in here. And what I did is I clicked on Create Table. And then I created a user table. You just change the name and change the columns that you'd want in your table. And then you would click on Run. And then after that, if we head down to our database icon, you'll see that we have our users table. And you can also create different roles inside of your databases. And there's a couple other things you can do in here, but we're mainly concerned with our users table right now for this demo. So I'm gonna go ahead and click this little icon here. And this is going to be our documentation. Inside of our introduction tab, it'll tell you how to get started. So we would install an NPM package, we would import Supabase, and then we would go ahead and set up our clients. For authentication, you'll see that they give you your URL and then your Supabase key, which you would probably want to store in an environment variable inside of your JavaScript project. 
inside of our tables and views, you can see we have our users table. It gives us our schema with all of the different columns we have in here. And then it also gives us some example calls so we can retrieve everything. And you'll see that we could actually just copy and paste this right into our project because it's already referencing our users table. They have another call with pagination. Then they show you how to subscribe to all of your events. For other calls, we would have to click on the docs button and we could go to the docs and look at how to create a record, create bulk records, upserts. It shows us how to read records, how to update our records, and how to delete our records. Now, in order to demo Supabase, what I've done here is I've set up a form using View Formulate with the ability to add users. You'll see we have a first name, last name, email, username, and our submit button. On submit, we're going to save users, and our V model is our form values. Below that, we have a div where we loop through the users and we display the first name, last name, email, and username, and we give the ability to delete that user. Down here in our export defaults, you'll see we have some data properties of the form values of our formulate form, and then we have our users that we can push and splice out of when we add and delete users from our Supabase database. Next, we have a couple lifecycle hooks of mounted and created, and then we have some methods of save user and delete user. So in order to install Supabase in our project, let's open up a new terminal. Let's head over to their documentation. And you'll see under introduction, they have an NPM package that we can install. So we're gonna go ahead and copy that, head back to our project, paste that in and let that install. And once it's done installing, I will be right back. Now that Supabase has installed, let's go ahead and head back to their docs. And you'll see here at the bottom, they give you some instructions for initializing Supabase in the project. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that. And then at the top of our script tag, I'm gonna go ahead and paste that in. And what we need to do here is take this create clients and that's what we're gonna be importing from Supabase. Put a space here. Then I need to edit my environment variable. So I'll say view underscore app underscore Supabase key. So it will recognize my environment variable in the project. Next, we're gonna go down to save user. And this is what we're going to fire when we want to save a user. And we're gonna say await Supabase.from. We're gonna reference the users table. And we're gonna say dot insert. We're going to pass it an array. And inside of this array, we're just gonna say this dot form values. Go ahead and save that. Now, in order to display these users on the page, we could go ahead and add them underneath this await, but what we're gonna do is subscribe to our inserts and do like a real time data feed. So what we're gonna do is head back to their documentation and under tables and views, you can see that we have our users table here. And if we click on it, it gives us the schema of our table. We can list the records out and subscribe to changes. So what we're gonna do is subscribe to the inserts on the user table. And to do that, we're going to grab this right here. I'm gonna head back to the project. We're gonna to go to our mounted lifecycle hook, and I'm just gonna go ahead and paste that in. So what it's doing is it's looking at the users table on the inserts, and then we get a payload. So what we're gonna say is this.users.push. And what we're gonna push into this is payload dot new and the new is our users object that we just created so let's go ahead and save this head over to our form we'll say diligence dev the diligent dev at gmail.com and the diligent dev and we're going to go ahead and hit submit and you'll see that after submit our user shows up below our form but if we go to the top and we reload the page the user is gone so the next thing we want to do is list all of the users when the page is loaded. So let's head back over to their documentation and you'll see it says to retrieve everything, we can use this right here. So what I'm going to grab is that right there. We're going to head back over. We're going to go to our created lifecycle hook. I'm going to go ahead and paste that in. And instead of returning the body here, we're just going to say this dot users equals body. Go ahead and save that. 
and reload. And you'll see we have our diligent dev user. The next thing we wanna be able to do is delete our user. So let's head back to their documentation and under their user's documentation, it isn't located there at the moment, but we can head back to their main docs and look at deleting. And you'll see right here, we can delete using this method. So let's go ahead and copy this and head back and underneath our delete user, we'll go ahead and paste that in. We will get rid of values here. We're going to be passing in an ID. So if we go up here and look, we're passing in the user ID to this method. And what we're gonna do is reference users and pass it the ID. Hit Alt Shift F to format that and we'll go ahead and save it. And in order to display that on the page, what we need to do is set up another subscription for delete. So if we head back, we do have that one under our self documentation. So we have deletes right here. And then what I'm going to do is copy this, go back to our project, go back to our mounted lifecycle hook and under our other subscription, I'm going to go ahead and paste that in. We're going to remove this console log. And instead we're gonna say const ID equals payload dot old dot ID. We'll say const index equals this dot users dot map. And we're gonna map over the ID. And we're going to get the index of the ID that we're getting from our payload. And then we'll say this dot users dot splice. And we're going to splice at the index and remove one. So we'll go ahead and save this. And it looks like I copied the wrong one. Instead of update, we want delete. So we'll save that again. We'll come back and hit delete. And you'll see that our user is deleted from the screen. And to show you how this looks from their interface, let's go ahead and pin this over here. What I'm gonna do is add our diligent dev user back in. See now it's being displayed on the screen. If we hit this little lightning bolt icon, you'll see we come to our SQL editor and I can do select star from users. And we'll go ahead and run that. And you'll see inside of our editor, we get our results down here. And then what we can do is I can just delete from users. I'll go ahead and run this. And you'll see that when it was deleted, it went ahead and removed it from the screen in real time. So that's gonna go ahead and wrap it up for this super base tutorial. I know it was really, really basic, but it gives you a good idea of what you can accomplish with Superbase. If you got any value out of this video, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like and subscribe button. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, go ahead and drop a line in the comment section below. And until next time, happy coding.